Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 480. Wow, that seems like a really big number. Uh, I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron, here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, and we got so much going on. We're going to have a blast this week. Joining us, first of all, he's representing the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. He's a sound man out there. He is Hot Wheels. How you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing wonderful after a crazy bloody people. It was... It was warfare, folks, and you'll have to buy the DVD or digital download yeah, to find out what I'm talking right? about. Available shortly at PittsburghWrestling.com. I can't wait to edit that here later this week. Uh, you'll be, I'll be, I'll be probably live tweeting the edit as I've been uh, doing lately as I'm getting into some of these projects, and I can't wait to check that out. Sounds like it was a lot of fun from uh, the representatives that went out there. One of those representatives who's joining us uh, back on the show for the first time in a long time. What? He is Chachi. Chachi what? says on the Twitters, ChachiPlays.com. What? Yes. Give me a hug. Ah, oh. oh, buddy. There he's oh. hugging his computer. Look at that. Look at that. that he's back. Weird. He's back. Oh, suck. At certain I'm point, here. you know, at a certain point, you because you have uh, re uh, rebuilt your 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 love for professional wrestling in several several ways, and I want to have a conversation later in the show about that real quick if we can, Chach. Well, here, okay, let me just point something out really quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last time I was on the show, uh, a common occurrence was making fun of Eamon during the. Uh, what was it? The Indie Minute? Yep, yep. One of the reasons why we separated it from the show and made right. its own podcast. Uh, I, I always gave him shit for the Indie Minute. Um, and another one of the, the things that I was doing at the time, the last time I was on the show, was asking what NXT was every time you guys brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> and now... And now, I look forward to Thursday mornings when I watch NXT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. It's awesome. He's been transformed. He is a reborn wrestling fan, ladies and gentlemen. And check out ChachiPlays.com as well. And please donate yes, to a great, great cause. ChachiPlays.com is the most important thing that you could do right now. There you go. There you go. Also with us uh, from Riz Plays on the Twitters and the YouTubes, it's the Riz. Riz Plays Games. Riz Plays Games. I got your Twitter right, at least, on the screen. You did. did. Uh, holy shit. Yes? This week has been hell. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. A little bit of a visual there. The wrestling uh, buddy is standing at full attention. Uh, but we also have a in-studio panel ready with this and with props. Uh, we're right down the line, first on the right over there, DJ Lunchbox of PanelRiot.com. Hogan, Race Wars, fight. Fight. Hogan, <laughs> Race Wars, black. Hogan, won't fight. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the Carlin's pair. Oh, that was Casey Jones in the boobies. Uh, <laughs> Matt and Jen Carlin's. That's mainstream Matt and Jen Carlin's on the Twitters, respectively. Welcome to the... St- Jen's first time in the studio! Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as is tradition, uh, LB... Did you put down a plastic cover for her on the couch? Because, I mean, that couch is dirty. Yeah, I already yeah, wet the couch on the last show. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. I'm sitting on a towel. It's in a there, don't, there don't worry, are, don't worry. I rubbed his nose that. in it, and I sent him out into the backyard after he wet the couch. And I, That's true. I still, I still have nightmares from the things I did on that couch. Well, <laughs> I made him eat things. Jen and Jen, Jen, the night is young. <laughs> 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 we'll see where that so goes. But this is your Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> Subscribe to us on all the video and the audio platforms. Share the show <laughs> if you dig it. Let other people know about the mayhem, please. <laughs> Grow this <laughs> nation. You can also drop us a line at that email address before <laughs> Will. Good times. Put up the phone number. Good times ass. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412 206 WMS0. 
please, we want to hear from you. Several people on this show have been uh, messaging us. <laughs> Riz is making noises as he's positioning his uh, his uh, wrestle buddy over there. It's been very disconcerting. <laughs> I just like your. <laughs> I'm like, what are you having a wrestling match? <laughs> what is happening over there? <laughs> He's rubbing his tummy. What is that? <laughs> I'm making him feel better. He's making him yeah. feel better. No, write him, he write doesn't him a get weekend. to feel better. Write him a he poem. Does- yeah, write him a poem, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, please check out our friends Basic Sickness, basicsickness.com, for the music you hear on this and the Indie Mayhem show. Some great stuff, free music. He's got a new album in the works, Pittsburgh Local, of course. And, of course, uh, uh, you know, we'll, you'll find out all kinds of ways you can support the show, support friends, friends of the show throughout the wrestling world. Now they're playing with toys on the couch as well. Oh, so. man, we're the parents. last time I was on the show, the theme music was done by... Uh, LB. <laughs> wow, that's true. Wow. That's true. Before we had basic sickness, I did yep. a theme song. Right, exactly. I think we've we've had a few different people do that to the same beat, I think, as well. Huh? Uh but anyways. Yeah, we would just update it. Yeah, yeah. Which like we <laughs> that guy's not with WWE anymore. We should probably update this music. Uh but anyways. <laughs> that's why we should do that. For some reason. We should seriously perform all the old theme songs oh geez for the 500th episode oh geez i was trying to think if i knew all the words to like my own songs because <laughs> uh, I, I was like i was like i found like uh, like the crap album on itunes on apple music and uh, which is weird because i know i'm we're kind of getting paid for me listening to my own music mm-hmm. uh wait, it, wait a minute you, you had an album mm-hmm. oh we've had this discussion mm-hmm. we no okay sword? this is there was off an al- air. LB, yeah. there was an album sword used to be a rapper and i guessed it on it you were like Snoop Dogg to his Dr. Dre. I yes. have the CD. Oh, man, That's, so that is great. a really accurate <laughs> summation of our friendship, actually. <laughs> actually, today is the birthday of the producer of that album. I, I, and, I, and, and he did an old... Oh, I, and I shared that on the Twitter today, so if you go look for that. Uh, from earlier earlier today, but this is not what this show's about. Then we'll have this conversation I off so air. Much about we'll, you every we'll day. We'll have this conversation wow. off air. Uh, go YouTube search of uh, "crap monkey flings poo" and you'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, is where I'll leave that. But hey, you know what? There's some people. Pay- there's some patrons on the Patreon supporting this show. One including the great uh, Antonio Garza of the Wrestling Revolution.com. Give him a plug. He's been the first patron. Uh, supporting the show. Also, of course, Diggity! Woo! Long time supporter, so he gets us to do that. Become our boss. Become a friend of the show. Go to patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and, and uh, find out what ridiculous stuff you get me to do when I say your name every week. Plus get uh, mayhem show gold, state of the mayhem, other secret inclusive stuff, and you guys become our bosses. That's right. Go check it out. So, what? It's, I, I'm just stalling. I've just been stalling. We've been doing an intro for about eight minutes now because I don't want to talk about our first subject. How do we transition to this terribly serious topic? That we're I don't know. It, it's horrible. Uh, Sorg, I, let's do it this way. Sorg, how do you feel about black people? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Sorg, no, remember, yeah. remember, remember, there's one on the show. I understand that, yeah, and I, I appreciate that. Black. And I'm oh. waiting. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Wheels. <laughs> I, I, feel like, I feel like if Sorg doesn't pull out Jerry Maguire right now, we're, we're missing it. Oh, oh, thanks, like, thanks for leaving me into it. Money. Sorg doesn't yell, I love the black man. Right now. <laughs> That's new, we're, we all, uh, we're waiting, Sorg. Wheels. Sorg does love the black man. Answer the Wheels. question, Sorg. No. Wheels, I love you, man. Yes, Sorg. <laughs> hey, I love you too. Hey, if Sorg did not love the black man, he would not have spent three hours in the car with me. That's right. I spent three hours in the car with Wheels. Exactly. Either way, so was, Sorg, Sorg loves black people. Uh, yes, which is a great yes. transition because you know who doesn't love black people? <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Oh no! Brother. Oh, oh brother. no! Oh brother! Oh brother! Oh brother! Oh brother. oh brother! Where art thou? Mm. Mm. Like this. This is the thing. We we we're joking, but it's not really that big of a Far-fetched. joke. We yeah, have to we have to joke, joke to cover our heartbreak. Oh, and and. And it, the thing is, the part where everybody gets confused about is the angle aspect to this. Like, hey, 
didn't McMahon say the N-word on TV that one time? Mm-hmm. Or didn't Booker T say that one word? Yeah. But he didn't, he didn't add fucking to the, end, to the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. And he didn't say it 50 times and who knows what's coming out next. All right. Uh, we, we need to also, sum up. We, the, we need to sum up exactly what happened for those that maybe not uh, completely brushed up on, on everything that's going on. Basically, uh, mm-hmm. some audio or a transcript of some audio came up from a few years ago. I think they were saying about 2007, back when I had a mm-hmm. rap group. The sex tape. It's from the sex, sex tape? It's from okay. the sex tape. It's from the sex tape. So apparently. Yeah, Sorg had a sex tape. No, and no, I no. guessed it on it. <laughs> no. <laughs> It was great. Everybody I was, was I was the shop, fluffer. Was there. Hey, Sorg has a lot to fluff. Usually they don't let the fluffer on the camera, but that's pretty cool. Fresh. <laughs> Not usually. <laughs> yeah. I lobby hard for it. Yeah. Look, nobody wants to see wet pubes. <laughs> we are avoiding talking about this so badly right now. <laughs> I can't see Sorg. I can't tell if he's laughing. There's a monitor in the way. <laughs> Um, anyways, so there was a transcript from the sex tape and it was talking about, uh, uh, what was it? Somebody that was helping with Brooks music career that wasn't going very well. And there's some very naughty, naughty N words. He called him ninja a lot, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Uh, so he also, he also uh, had some derogatory comments about, uh, gay people as well. Right, right. Another one came out. I, I know we saw this today on the, on the Facebook group. Apparently this was, uh, involving like an episode where they, they visited his, uh, childhood home. And there, I guess a, a, a gay guy answered the door, and there was a little bit of uh, 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 bad stuff there. Um, so, wait, wait, wait. Before we go much further, about what Riz said about you know uh, Vince McMahon and and you know the uh, the hypocrit- hip, hip, hypocritical mm-hmm. nature of the WWE, right? Cutting ties with him for this, just because Hulk Hogan said and did these things doesn't make them doing it right or wrong. Yeah. They're trying to do better. And it, this is an expression of that, I feel. Exactly. and yeah. uh, it, I mean, I, I, I don't want to say it doesn't make it wrong. It was fucking wrong in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> they're both, yeah, it was wrong and it's really wrong. Uh, but I was going to say the thing we're trying to do is we, we're saying Hulk Hogan, this guy, the one with red and yellow, was saying the, the words. Uh, but what the reality is, Terry was saying those words. It wasn't a character. It was the guy playing the character, but it wasn't in character. Right, right. He didn't say... Okay, but uh, here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have children, and they look up to this guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, where does that... Where There is no line there. Of course. Of course there's not. All I'm saying is the people who are defending them, defending Hulk Hogan or Terry, is Terry Balea is looking at it with that thin line of, well, the character said it, and and not Hulk. Like, I don't I don't get that point. That, like this, Terry is a horrible fucking person. Mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan is the real American. That's like but, that's like saying like, Chris Benoit killed his family, but the crippler Chris Benoit did some great stuff in the ring. Exactly. You can't separate that shit. No, you can't. But can't you? I mean, have you gone back and watched a Chris Benoit match? No. Yes. No. I actually no. haven't. You you have it, but you, but you have. Yes. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why, but yeah, and I know this conversation has come up a lot about Benoit, but for me. I don't have a very hard time separating the art from the real person. Okay. Um, and, and then I will probably be able to watch a Hulk Hogan match and be able to car- compartmentalize that when I'm watching that too. It's not going to, I'm not, I'm not doing 12 hour Benoit marathon Sorg, but if no, a no, match no. comes on, I'm not going like- to be like, no, after this, I'm going to turn it off. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Because it was good. He was a good wrestler. I, I mm-hmm. think I think the difference here, uh, you know, uh, Mel Mel Gibson said some really crappy things in in recent years. We all, <laughs> we all know about that. We don't need to recount that. But are you going to stop watching Lethal Weapon? No, are you going to stop no. watching episodes of Seinfeld because of what Michael Richards said? Exactly. No, but Mel, Mel, Mel yeah. Gibson and yeah. Michael Richards and Chris Benoit were not childhood role models. 
Exactly. I think that's why this you is think that's no the difference. Deal, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, yes. I mean, and I'm not gonna not watch a Hulk Hogan match. I'll still right. if it, if I'm watching a classic WrestleMania and a Hulk Hogan match comes on, sure yeah. I'll watch it. But I'm not gonna be like, oh yay, that guy still mm-hmm. is a do gooder mm-hmm. or whatever. And, and I think I, I think you would be naive to think that most of the people that entertain you, be it in wrestling or otherwise, um, that this stuff doesn't happen. I think the unfortunate thing is, uh, is Hogan got caught, right? Yeah. Uh, especially when we talk about just the way things were in wrestling. We've, we've commented several times. If you look at like 80s WWE stuff, there's some rough stuff there. Racial, domestic, etc. cetera, right? Uh, and, and, mm-hmm. and in a day where we're kind of talking about the Confederate flag and whether that should be okay, it, this doesn't hold up anymore. Now, WWE's not scrubbing all that stuff. So, mm. you know, but, you got to think, if that stuff was making it on TV, what do you think the discussions were of people of that era? You know, that's just... I'm, not, I'm trying to play a little bit devil's advocate here, but there is a little bit of, like, that's just how, unfortunately, things were, and it's hard for somebody... I mean, how many people have parents or grandparents that still say some things you're, that really don't work today? Oh, right? No, oh, yeah. Right. I mean... It still work? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing, though. Uh, in this day and age, wrestling isn't all rednecks anymore. Right, right. The fans. Yeah. yeah. So when you have paying fans who are uh, insulted by something that an icon in your product has done, mm-hmm. you have to take action. Right, right. They lost $50 million on the stock market. So but imagine that, what that they would have done. Of the week. Yeah. So it, it could have been, it may have increased. I haven't checked. Mm-hmm. So, but imagine what it would have done if they kept Hulk Hogan on. Right. Right. How much stock yeah. they would lose then, but, and the money in the advertising and all that stuff, like that's money you can't get back. Mm-hmm. Wheels. So, oh, good. Wheels. Yes, let's ask the resident black guy oh, on the show. I was going to say, um, <laughs> Wheels, how do you feel? Yeah, and it's like something we just mentioned earlier. Um, the fact that uh, people keep mentioning McMahon saying nigga and Booker T saying nigga. They said nigga. Oh, Terry Balea said the naughtier one. Mm-hmm. So they cannot compare Booker T, who is a black person, and Vince McMahon with Terry Balea. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, why sit there and bring those guys up when no Hogan is the bad guy? He's right. Yeah, he's right. he's the jerk. Right, because it was said in a different way. It was it was it was unequivocally said in a hateful way. Right, yes. not as part of the storyline, not as part of anything else. It was like he's mad at that person, and that came out, right? Yeah, mm, so. exactly. I mean, it's well, kind of like don't uh, uh, in basketball, Donald Sterling. He said the exact most, mostly the exact same thing. Is that the Clippers guy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he got his ass kicked out. He lost his. He lost ownership. Uh, and. And the one thing I, I love, I, love, I had to think about for a minute is they took off all of his stuff on, on WWE.com. They, they made sure he's nowhere to be found on WWE Network, like for a search end, for a search. So they're taking out WrestleManias one through nine, like in a row. Uh, they're taking out half of WCW and all of the NWO. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what most of the people want to actually watch on WWE Network. They wanted to see. The, I wanted to see the the, the matches, the, the the matches that are were before him, before me. But now with this being thing, it's probably not going to be easy to find. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still, this guy, it, you, you know, it had to be something big when they preemptively. When WWE preemptives something, when they go, we have to take preemptive actions so we don't get looked at as this <laughs> bad company. Right. When uh, they say, okay, Hulk, we're going to take you out before 
the video the, before the tapes come out. They 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 got they had to know some serious shit was said on those tapes. Ugh. After the whole it, it, Chris Benoit thing, where they had a tribute show to him before mm-hmm. all the information came out, I mean they're so super gun shy about this now as well. They should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the Chris Benoit stuff was happening during that show because you can tell when that when that show turned when they started figuring out what the hell happened. And then you started going, oh, we should talk about something else <laughs> about like, you know, women and the family and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> with, with Hogan, it's what are we talk about. We have to get rid of them. Like they had, they had to do something. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know. I don't know if Ben Wying them was a, Ben Wying him was a good idea, mm-hmm. but there's, there was no real alternative. Did you, did you say are, are they really scrubbing him from like WWE Network? I think they are. I don't think I don't that, that, that's out. impossible. That's absolutely impossible because there's so much. I, well, I think that, that if you search for Hulk Hogan, oh, they they just killed him from the search. It's <clears> not they like killed him from the search. I say it's not like you can't see what WrestleMania, uh, you know, three. They, they or deleted. Something. They deleted his uh, his WWE 2K15 stuff. Okay. Like the DLC that cost money, uh, because that is his name on there. That's not WWE's name; it's his name. Uh, and they decided to get rid of anything that has to do with Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a shame. That, that's a shame. And and, and there's mm. like there's not there's there's other like, there's other people it's just because this is so public because there's other people that have done horrible horrible things including murdering other people like well even like uh superfly jimmy snuka is still kind of under this weird investigation thing you don't see his stuff disappearing right um but again this became such a such a huge huge thing matt did you have something i wondered uh what you guys think about the amount of uh fellow wrestlers who have come out on twitter and other places in support of hulk hogan I haven't oh, seen. I'm sorry, of, mm. or should we say, in support of Terry Balea? I haven't seen that. I've seen the uh, <laughs> "Hey, here's Drake and all my black friends on on, on social media" kind of thing. And, and Eamon is that, talking. That was my and, and Eamon is talking about he doesn't feel sympathetic for Hulk if he he didn't he, he might have feel more sympathetic for Hulk if he didn't immediately go to the "I have black friends, I have friends that are black" <laughs> well mm-hmm. on social media, which yeah. I kind of agree with. That Definitely was kind of a that Hogan was, on Twitter. You got to lay out. You got it. Get off Twitter right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. stay away. Yeah. yeah Change your password and walk he, away. He's tweeting about his workouts and shit, like everything was normal. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I think Matt was trying to get me started here already. Uh, I got blocked by Tito Ortiz because I was trying to def- defend myself because he was supporting Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. And honestly, Tito Ortiz shouldn't really be supporting anybody. Because he allegedly attacked his girlfriend. Just saying, allegedly. Hey, he did fight it in court and won. But come on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's uh, you know, you say don't meet your heroes, right? Uh, don't don't. Right. Uh, to be honest, like, hey, yeah, most of them are shitty. You know, most of them done some really stupid stuff uh, to get where they are, or just you know, are at a different level when they're at that that level, right? Um, and it's unfortunate. Um, there was a, uh, this is all coming out and, uh, over the time and I felt so bad. I had a Hulkamania shirt packed for the gathering last week. There was a guy with so a Hulkamania nice. shirt on at the insane clown pass posse, uh, uh, seminar and asking if they had heard and asked if there's still Hulkamaniacs anymore. And, uh, to which they said, you know, we haven't listened to it. We're really, really hoping we get a chance to read that and, and see that maybe it's not as big a deal as, as it sounds like it is as we're hearing about it but they said nah fuck that if that's really what he said and that's really what he thinks fuck that we're not hulkamaniacs anymore so that's why i got the question on screen are you still a hulkamaniac and uh to me uh, i'm uh (sighs) (laughs) while you process that i'll Uh, I'll just say that we'll, we'll go around i think everyone should answer this question i never identified myself as a hulkamaniac so i get the I get the past. Right, right. And that's what I think, like, 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 I, 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 when I'm putting the question out on the Facebook, they're like, oh, I never was. I was was more of a Hulk, uh, warrior guy or macho man guy. It's like, no, no, seriously, if you're a Hulkamaniac, I don't give a crap about anybody else. 
I, I want to know if you were a guy like me that grew up as an eight-year-old wearing out the WrestleMania three tape from his uh, local video store, doing the poses, going nuts like I watch John Cena kids doing now live. Uh, are you still a Hulkamaniac? Is the question. No. No. Okay. As the resident black guy, I will answer this question <laughs> first. Wheels lays it out. I'm so glad he's here. <laughs> Is he our I, Hulk Hogan was the reason I started watching wrestling. I had the shirt, like Sork said, with the tearaway and everything. And I tore it, so I don't have it anymore. But, yes, I have Hulk Hogan LJN figures in the closet. Does it mean I'm going to throw them away? No. But... I am a wrestling fan, so I'm not a Hulkamaniac. I'm more of a wrestle maniac. So that was a different movie, I, dude. What was that sword? Sorry, that was a different kind of movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it was. But I mean, yeah, I no, I'm not a Hulkamaniac anymore. Right, right. Well, here's the thing, and and for the record. I was never a Hulkamaniac. I was uh, far too young to know wrestling at that point in time. But uh, I, I feel like you can still say that you are or were a Hulkamaniac because really how relevant is being a Hulkamaniac in this day and, day and age? Mm-hmm. Also, it's something akin to uh, uh, liking a band. Mm-hmm. You can be like, "Oh, I love them," until they release this album, and then I kind of moved on. Till they drop this album that says the N word a lot in a hateful way. <laughs> right. So I mean, it, it, I mean, you, I don't know. You can go both ways on it, but I, I was never a Hulkamaniac, and I, I, I'm still not a Hulkamaniac. All right, I've settled down to I am still a Hulkamaniac in spirit of the character. Obviously, I think the person, mm-hmm. and I've had my problems with the person for about 10 years now. Obviously, the person himself is a piece of shit, okay? Uh, but uh, I, and I'm really pissed off that I, I just bought a Hulkamania uh, shirt, and it's, uh, I feel like wearing that around is akin to wearing the uh, Confederate flag as a shirt uh, around Pittsburgh. Uh, so uh, that sucks. That fucking sucks. Uh, but again, I will be able to either way, I'm going to be able to watch old Hulkamania, Hulk Hogan matches, NWO, and I'm going to, that's part of your childhood. You know what I mean? Right. And, mm-hmm. uh, I, I did look it up. You can still search for him. You can still search network. for him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think, he didn't get the Benoit scrub. I think they're just, um, they did the site scrub. I know. Uh, yeah, they got rid of his. Oh, fame picture. No, no. If they, if they, Ooh. if they scrubbed him from network, no. And they didn't even fully scrub Benoit. You nope. just can't find him. But if you know where to look, you know where to look, right? They You're probably. Preview. What's that? They just put that preview on there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, Not the so preview. The warning. They they do have a specific warning for him. Yeah. Don't. If you're gonna watch a pay per view with him on it, isn't there some kind of warning that says this? I have to go look. Yeah, there, there's yeah, a right. warning, and I don't think they have like on the network where if you're in a pay per view, you have your different uh, milestones um, on your timeline where it shows you where the matches start and begin. And I don't think uh, Benoit matches will show up on that. And those are always wonky to begin with. They never start at the right time. They're, they're they don't always include all the right wrestlers and stuff. <laughs> so I'm sure again, you know, main event to you know what WrestleMania 20 or whatever is like. Why, why is that a two way? I don't remember. Wait a minute. Who won that one? You know, I mean, Stevie Richards won. That, 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 that yeah, Stevie Richards won at WrestleMania 20 the WWE title. So, uh, but but no, I <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? Describe his face over there. No, anyways, uh, hugging on Eddie Guerrero, Stevie Richards. You know, uh, but uh, no, no, it sucks. Uh, I don't think we'll uh, may never have another moment. I'm glad we got what we did at WrestleMania 30 um, with. Hogan, Rock, Stone Cold, for instance. Um, live from the Silver Dome. Live from the Silver Dome, brother. Brother. And, and what may be even more ironic about that, maybe this isn't ironic, he had already said those words before WrestleMania 30, sort. Well before. Mm-hmm. Well before that. Well before. And again. Those words had already come out of his mouth. And again, it's not a matter of he's always been a shitty person. 
Um, and somebody's pointing out some stuff that uh, Ole Anderson and Ric Flair uh, had, had supposedly done. I want to say about uh, 80% of the people in wrestling that you follow and idolize are probably pretty shitty people. Especially in the 80s. I hope you're a little over uh, mm-hmm. overestimating on that uh-huh. one. No, Sorry. no, no. If, I, if I'm talking to Amwood Riz, on the 80s, probably pretty shitty people. There was a lot of cocaine going around. <laughs> Hacksaw and Jim Duggan and Iron Sheik both got arrested in the same car with cocaine. Mm-hmm. So, and they were feuding at the time. time. Yeah. And they're, they're still loved and, well, they're still loved. Uh, but they, they just have the... the that stigma now that they were supposed to have this feud and they got caught in the same car with the Coke. Mm-hmm. And Vince McMahon said, you'll never work in this town again. And or you'll never work in this company lying. again. And then, and, and he's back and he's back. Everything mm-hmm. heals. You know, everybody has been back for the most part, you know, but so. I don't see, I don't see this healing too soon. No, no. Uh, Hogan will be never back, never be back in as large a capacity as he has been in recent years. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, to an- to answer your question, um, uh, I'm 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 kind of in the same boat as you, Sorg. I don't, I, I, I probably won't say that I'm totally against watching Hulk Hogan matches, but I'm also not going to sit there and go. This guy's the the guy who plays him is a piece of shit. Uh, but just to it, it's very very confusing because I I was brought up with three three of these three wrestle bikes and two of them have vanished for some reason I don't know if I I decided to take them away or not. This guy survived, has been surviving for how many years? I don't even, for over, over 20 years. And now I'm looking at him, I'm like, how the fuck? Like, I don't know how else <laughs> to speak about this. It, it, it angers me that he's, that Terry, that Terry Balea said it, but like Sorg said, I'm going to, probably still watch WrestleMania three, WrestleMania one, where he teamed with Mr. T and anything else that he probably has done with the NWO and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the character will probably live on, but Terry Bollea is scum. And yeah, but now, now here's a side question. Would you guys still maybe, WrestleMania 34, if he's still alive, would would he's you be coming out on a walker? Would you would you guys still mark out for Real American? I don't mark out for Real American now. I hate to say that, but Hulk Hogan burned through his goodwill with me a long time ago, mm-hmm. and now he's just another asshole athlete who is a dick. And somehow we're surprised that another athlete is doing something that's a dick. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's well, it's frust- it's 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 annoying because he is that you know that icon from so many of our childhoods, and we like to think that you know he would be better than that. But really, it's just like when when any football player has like a drug scandal or a mar- marital scandal scandal. I can't fucking talk. Or you know, a basketball player or whatever. It's just it's just another athlete who got paid because they're really good at one thing, and we translate that into they're probably a very good person. Mm-hmm. It, and it's almost kind of funny too because with Hogan, I mean, there was so much that kind of came before this all got out. There was stuff about you know Hogan the backstage politician and Hogan holding guys down and Hogan you know doing whatever he would do. To stay on top and it almost became as he grew older it almost became like part of his part of his charm it's like ah oh, hogan you know hey remember the time he you know did xyz at wrestlemania 6 and you really didn't let warrior shine the way he should have <laughs> um but so we all knew terry balea the person was probably doing some underhanded stuff behind the scenes <laughs> but 
because it never reached this extent, yeah, we could kind of like get over it. You is, know what? Nah, that's just is, him. It, that's it, just what he is. But this is something you can't get over. It's that public opinion, it, that public revelation kind of thing. You know, uh, when you can, I, I think there's like you can't go to how many times you you rent a wrestling shirt or something, and they were like, oh, wrestling. You watch blah blah blah, Bruno Sorrentino, studio wrestling, whatever. Oh, I used to watch Hulk Hogan. You know. Those people now, oh yeah, Hulk Hogan, yeah, didn't he say some really crappy stuff about a year ago? Is what you'll, mm-hmm. your conversation will be now. Mm-hmm. You don't, that same person isn't saying, oh, Hulk Hogan, I hear he's really shitty backstage. You know, that's not, that's a smart mark thing, right? Yeah. That's between us and our, our little circles, right? Now it's publicly, again, I kind of go to the Confederate flag thing. You know, the, the discussion is that it is this thing. Whether you thought it's been all these years and you watched Dukes of Hazards, I did, you know, and that's become mm-hmm. another thing. Hulk Hogan, somebody had the Photoshop of Hulk Hogan with the Confederate flag rip, uh, shirt rep. Mm-hmm. It feels like the same thing. This thing represented my pride, my Americanism, uh, everything that I thought was good. Yeah. And to some people, that flag meant the same thing for whatever reason, forgetting about whatever that meant, right? And we can get all that conversation, but that's it, it. It is the same thing. That thing that meant so much to me. Now everybody is telling me, or he is telling me, or showing me examples of why is not a, why is a horrible, horrible thing. And now I got to deal with that. So, and some people resist that. You know, some people are going to be out there. It's like I'm still a Hulkamaniac. I'm going to wear my Hulkamania shirt. Yeah. To the next show in disgust. They're I'm in full. denial. The, the people are out right. there right now. Exactly. They're on Twitter. They're right. in fandom. I know because denial. Hogan's retweeting them every single hour. <laughs> So, well, some of them, some of them are just bullshitting to Hulk Hogan. No yes. doubt. Yes. Yeah, like there, there are some people who, there are some famous guys on there that are being tweeted by not so famous guys, mm-hmm. portraying them as father and son, <laughs> best buddies, and it, it, I think most of them were like a football team, football club, uh, which was kind of weird, uh, but. But like I think Matt, you said it before. He needs to stop. Like no, nobody's gonna take him seriously. Nobody's taking him seriously now. Now he's retweeting everybody who thinks he's serious, who who he thinks thinks he's serious, mm-hmm. and they're not even serious about that. So just maybe step back from your pedestal and mm-hmm. go away for a month, two, three, maybe a year. And maybe he'll blow over. And, and, maybe. and he did. And he did apologize, Sork. He did. He issued a statement. Bullshit. He apologized. Listen, Riz. He he issued a statement. He apologized. He owned it. But what he's doing now is not is not going to help in the long term. No. No. He's no. Fall no. Off the no. Map. I don't. I don't consider that a, an apology because the very next day, the very next day, he started going on about how Obama said it on a podcast and how <laughs> how. How that was Vince a really good podcast, Mc- now, he even said Vince McMahon was, did it was. too and how he's a hypocrite and all yeah. that stuff. So no, I don't take his apology seriously because no, no, that's what no. he, he wants well, to I do. didn't believe him. I didn't believe it was a sincere apology either, but he did it. I mean, it was a media it's apology. PR 101. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to PR, you apologize, you lay out, you wait for it to blow over, you come back. Everyone loves a comeback story. You get a reality show, you, you get yourself redeemed, and we'll see you at all WrestleMania right. 35. All right, all right. You know but what? I got it. I got You know what needs to happen? You know what? Here's my here is my Hulk Hogan recuperation plan. Okay, all right. He did the thing. Stays off Twitter. Again, bad, horrible. That's, that's the key. That's that's, that's you got to stay away from that. Step one. Step one. Get off that. Twitter. <laughs> uh, step step three. I don't know. I have a few steps in there, but it's going to end up in the most kick-ass music video with Snoop Dogg and uh-huh. Hulk Hogan teaming up. And Darren Young. Maybe Hulk. No, not Darren. Uh, isn't yeah, Darren actually, Young. Actually, that would be the ultimate uh, uh, make good by uh, hanging out with Darren Young, I guess. But, uh, but uh, Jen, you got something to say over there? No. You've been very quiet during this. I saying millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I, I think we've done this to death with the bulk of the show so far. Uh, Jen's trying thoughts. to set an example for Hulk by staying quiet. Hulk, if maybe you were more like Jennifer, we, you know, you would have a chance. There you go. Right now, no chance. All you got to do is bow leave. <laughs> that too. 
<laughs> there you go. Oh, we'll see how this works out. And like I said, we're all kind of reeling from it in, in one way or another. Those of us that are longtime Hulk, Hulkamaniacs. I love that. Uh, but, uh, Riz, uh, is this the last you're going to wear all your Hulk Hogan gear there for a while? Because <laughs> I noticed the, you got all of it on. And mine's still um, in my bag from the gathering. And I haven't really. It's going to stay there a while, I think. I, I, might, I might do some like Instagram things with this buddy right here. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that it's, I'm probably not even gonna meant, even realize this is in my closet anytime soon. If you have a, uh, if you have a, a rock figure and and anything else, I just have the scene where like just like the buddy and it just says, "I'm sorry." <laughs> so, oh, make, he's he's gonna do a lot more than that. Oh no! Oh no! All right. Well, with that, please let us know your thoughts. We're on the Twitters. I'm sure a lot of you guys got opinions. In the meantime, you can support the show, PittsburghWrestling.com. Some great stuff. And IndieWrestling.us coming very, very soon uh, as well. It's going to be uh, restructured and, and a nicer way for you guys to check out your indie wrestling from the IWC, the RWA, including, hey, there is this DVD coming out tomorrow as we record <laughs> this uh, that is actually featuring our little Hulkamaniac here, Riz. Um, he gets a he gets a little bit of a spot on it. I didn't even I didn't even like give myself a spot on this thing, Riz. You and didn't. I spent three days next to the guy too. You did. And and but I had to go through all this stuff. It's great. It is uh, the Legend of Virgil and his traveling traveling merchandise table. Uh, there is actually if you go to uh, a Chair Shot Reality with Justin Labar, Virgil was on there reading mean tweets about himself. <laughs> and there's a fantastic trailer uh, with this this uh, DVD that I've been living with for the last two, three, four months. Uh, we visited his apartment in April. Yes, I went to Virgil's house. Oh, how did it smell, Sorg? Uh, did it smell like flowers? No, it just sounded... It smelled it, like failure. Oh. Let's try to be nice. And it smelled like thing. '80s wrestler. Okay, uh, but anyways, it, <laughs> this is um, this is now beat the pre-orders of the Montreal Theory, which was uh, I know uh, uh, Linda Hart hates us uh, because of that one. So uh, uh, Virgil apparently not going to hate us. I think he's going to do fine out of this whole deal. Uh, so oh, yeah. from from the things that I've been seeing and his. Uh, uh, I, I, if you guys have seen, he's been all over Twitter. I, I guess the guys that have been helping the Iron Sheik are now helping Virgil, and oh, Jesus uh, we're Christ. learning Whoa. about <laughs> we're learning about from his uh, Indiegogo helping, video helping. and the AMA on Reddit. Helping. He did an AMA on Reddit. <laughs> sure, I can't wait for the uh, Virgil documentary uh, to go with our, our our interview. There is a Virgil documentary. Oh, sure, right? it, it is. It is. Oh, it's more of an interview. So we we go through. We talk with him for a bit. There's pop up facts checking as he's telling us virgil facts um the, the i really enjoyed the the, 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 the the uh trailer i was just like i want to watch this now just to watch Wait, the rest of it is it the joe dombrowski facts that he or is it actual facts facts uh our our fact checking department which is joe, oh, which is joe dombrowski <laughs> Uh, but there's also plenty of stories, uh, some crazy stuff, some matches that he was involved in, including one where Virgil fights three guys. I think I remember that one. You remember that one? This may be the most important professional wrestling documentary ever conceived. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Sorry, Zach Gowan. I'm on it. Sorry, Zach Gowan. And Riz is on it. So uh, go check that out. Uh, uh, Joe-Dabrowski.com. You can pre-order the DVD now. But by the time you're listening to this on the <laughs> podcasting feeds, it's going to be up for digital download. It's going to be up for sale. Uh, I should have a couple copies if you see me at the IWC show this weekend. I know Joe is bringing a lot of copies down to, um, I think it's going to be in Charleston, West Virginia, for some kind of wrestling fan fest. Uh, so you can pick up a copy physically there and uh, get it into your beady little hands. So uh, go and of course uh, the digital will be at pittsburghwrestling.com. So with that, uh, let's get to subject number two, uh, a little happier topic, maybe sometimes for the ladies. Uh, so so two <laughs> things two things happen. Yes, sir. Uh, two things happen. One, John Cena, <laughs> the highest and the lowest. Uh, uh, he had his uh, film come out, a, a train wreck. Apparently, he was a pretty big part of that film yes that's correct uh, well i don't know would you say he was a big part of that film honey not as big as seth rollins <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times that's true 
No, seriously, how was it? I, I have no idea. It was good. He was good. Yeah. I liked it. He I specifically it. was very good. Okay. He was very convincing as a muscle-bound meathead sorg. Mm -hmm. He was oh. also gay. That sort of what? Maybe sort of gay. Wait, what, like gay, gay, or like um, or that like a uh, uh, bodybuilding movie with the Rock and and Mark Wahlberg kind of deal. Yeah, so yes, that. kind of like, like that. that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which was a fantastic movie. What was it called? Pain and Gain. Pain and Gain. Yeah. That's Love an awesome that movie. movie. Highly recommended. It. Yes. It's real freaking weird. And Michael Bay, can you amazing. believe it? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Some good stuff. And this uh, actually came in at, uh, what did it do for, oh, it did. I thought it was a little higher in the box office. I think it's a second weekend, Sork, so I think uh, you're going to be. Second weekend. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Trainwax, uh, last week they were in third place. They're in fourth now. So, I mean, it did do bad. Uh, 17 million, 61 total gross. So, uh, not bad for a comedy these days. I'd for, say. For, an, yeah. for an R rated romantic comedy? Wow. Yeah. If it's even it's threatening good. 75 to $100 million, it's doing really well for an wow. R rated yep. comedy. That's yeah, amazing. Definitely. But it's got, I mean, it's got a lot behind it. I mean, Amy Schumer alone mm -hmm. um, could sell the shit out of it, but then you get Judd Apatow, because it is a Judd Apatow film. Uh, on top of that, and then all the positive buzz it's getting, and it's, it's, it's a good little movie. It's really, really good. I thought Bill Hader was good. Bill Hader was great. Loved yeah, him. I wasn't expecting oh, yeah. him to be that good. LeBron was funny. I loved LeBron. Yep. yep. Awesome. But awesome. getting back Ladies to Cena. Uh, you see, his, we saw his penis. <laughs> no. Is that's that what we're, we're talking about. about. You see, Are... you sort, you see. Okay, go ahead. What? You want to describe it? Who, whose penis are we talking about? John Cena's penis. <laughs> the only <laughs> penis in the film. Not as good. See, as see Seth there's Rollins. a part. See, That's there's true. A part it is. It was smaller than Seth Rollins. That, that, it's because they were moving. It was covered. Uh, it was covered with a washcloth. It was covered effect. with a backlit washcloth. <laughs> and it was like, the, the, and the, it's still. I can it's tell still, you. I can tell you no, what religion like John Cena rack. is now. What? <laughs> <laughs> that man is circumcised. He's he, he's wandering around a bedroom in the nude after fucking spoilers just got done um, fucking and um it, you could you're, you're, you're viewing him team. and he's in the bathroom <laughs> and he like starts to turn around and you're like oh my god they're gonna show me full frontal of john cena and they cut away and you're like oh oh wow that was a close one you totally and already saw his ass back and he's just got the washcloth just that's it Hanging on, hanging a on his dick. Washcloth in your imagination, and the whole scene nation like there for everyone to see. It's amazing. Wow. It was backlit. It was a perfect outline of his uh, of his uh, was chain probably, gang. It, probably, <laughs> <laughs> it was probably. His said, you can't see me. <laughs> exactly. That's what I said. Wait, did the towel, did the, did the uh, washcloth have never give up on it? It said hustle, loyalty, oh respect. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't even put that together, but yeah, I'm never going to look at John Cena holding that rally towel at the top of the entrance ramp the same never. way. Yeah, yeah, it's way better now. <laughs> it, it suddenly makes sense. Because <laughs> now he jerks off in it. <laughs> I, 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 what else can I do? Hey, um, but Obi, let me ask you this. Yes. There was a uh, preview for another movie that's coming out. Um, a, a Tina Fey, Amy Poehler movie. Sisters. Sisters. And, Sisters I, yeah. and I saw John Cena in that movie trailer, too. Did you see that? Um, I actually missed the trailers, but I do know he's going to be in this film. And I can't wait for it. I saw and it. this I'm one's really even excited. this one's even greater. Greater. He's got a giant neck tattoo in this one, sort of. Yeah, he, plays, he basically plays the villain of the piece. John Cena's a movie star. I like them bad John boys. John Cena's a heel in the movies and a face in the ring. Although he was only sort of a... He wasn't really a heel in the movie. He was just an idiot. He loved her. <laughs> he did. That part was sad. You're right. That part I was just up. sad. I up. That was a bummer. What he was no saying spoilers. is what Nikki Bella wants to hear. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly that's right. right. He wants he, he wants her to be his uh, CrossFit queen. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that line was said. Yeah. Go see the movie. It's really good. It is very good. Go check it's it out. Very I don't funny. want to say anything It's a little uneven in parts, and the ending was painful to watch but everything else is really good that's awesome it had a couple parts that weren't perfect but you know yeah. what it's it, it's a smooth ride yeah. so so part. from that from at least he got the movie stuff out of the way he's filmed some stuff mm -hmm. uh because his face just shattered exploded yeah, this yeah. Week. What, one last thing i want to say about the movies is that he's got so he's got judd apatow and amy schumer endorsing him as an actor and now he's got tina fey and amy poehler also endorsing him as an actor he's in he's mm -hmm. set those guys use the same – it's basically like the same group of actors. I recognized half of the people in Trainwreck because I've seen them do work with Amy Schumer and Judd Apatow before. If he – if Sisters does even remotely well, he's in. 
he's in with that group, and that's fantastic to me. Awesome. He's going to be a movie star, Sorg. Yeah, he is. He's going to leave us like The Rock. <laughs> he's never going to But what, like, would, would some people be so mad about that, though? No. 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 I mean... It, the, <laughs> What? 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 Riz? What? What? Riz? Riz. Go ahead. He will, he will probably be mad because they get so excited when he shows up because they get to boo him. It would be nice it's if just, he went away. So when he came back, I would be excited to see him again. And then I would get more Dean Ambrose time. That's right. Also a movie star. I, right. I feel like the the kind of movies that he's going to be making are not going to be the kind of movies that most wrestling fans go to see. No. Mm-mm. Huh? They're going to be rom coms. They're going to be action. Oh, well, the, the, yeah. He's going to do some action. Stuff. Wrestling yeah. fans will go see Cena, or Cena fans will go see Cena. If if res, if John Cena starts doing a lot of action flicks like The Rock, wrestling fans will go see it. But I don't mm-hmm. I don't see your run of the mill wrestling fan running to see Tina Fey, Amy Poehler movies. The problem no. is no. that Cena's core fan base, Sorg, the little tykes, is fine. Should not be going to see no, Train Oh no no, <laughs> it's no, over. No. Well, you know, I, I think um, I, I think you're right about that. And also, they've tried him at action movie. It didn't work out. So, may, I mean, maybe at a certain point, if, if this other stuff pops for him, maybe, you know, a Michael Bay picks him up or something like that. Or, you know, like some of the great stuff that Rock has been able to do. Because you also think Rock did not just action movies throughout his career. He did... Um, uh, no, he had this really long run with Disney. Tooth Fairy, exactly. That was a, that was a strategic was, move, a decision that The Rock made early in his acting career. Mm-hmm. He was going to do his family-friendly stuff, and it paid off for him in the long run. But hey, exactly. even The Rock, when he was first doing his acting, wasn't all that great. But hey, He was know, really good at Be Cool, though. Yeah. I mean, he played the weird cool. gay cowboy bodyguard. He was awesome he, in that. Yeah, that was a big role for him. That's what right. sold me on The Rock as an actor. But our five-year-old thinks The Rock is the Tooth Fairy. That's right. And was crying the other day because Mason couldn't find his tooth and was crying because The Rock couldn't come visit us. <laughs> Parenting well, is hard. Wow. At least he didn't um, see the Larry the Cable Guy version. That's right. That's oh. right. Oh. And I said, oh. Mommy is sad too. abuse their children. How dare you say that? <laughs> These are good people. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, okay, going around, uh, wrestling got a little real on Monday night um, when uh, Seth Rollins apparently uh, uh, sticking it to him because he wasn't threatened by what he saw in Trainwreck uh, from John Cena. Uh, uh, completely <laughs> shattered his nose. I've never seen anything like that in pro wrestling. It was crazy. It was sideways. Yeah. I can't, I can't wait for him to get the starring role in Goonies. <laughs> oh, oh god damn. Oh, damn. Oh. Wow. I've been waiting I've been waiting all day for this. <laughs> <laughs> You're like wound up. There's a sloth reference in the Mayhem show. All right, all right, all right. you got anything else for us? A mask. <laughs> oh. Oh. Maybe they're gonna give him uh, Cody's mask from uh the shattered mirror. That'd be awesome. Give it, he did. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. Put paper bags on people's heads. Yeah, he's gonna wear the, we'll he's get gonna a heel turn. The one Cena mask that he wore in like the, the week he was in doing in just doing like dark matches. Oh yeah, that was good. One <laughs> Cena. Amazing. Uh, holy shit, that was nasty. I, I have to confess, I was I was watching Raw, and uh, but but you see, John Cena wasn't on at his normal nine o'clock start time. Yeah. And I was getting a little bit tired, and mm-hmm. I took a little Cena siesta, and I slept through that entire match, and woke up only in time to see uh, poor Seth tapping out. Oh. Uh, and, see. well, I fell asleep after the Ambrose curfew. Of course. That was like 8.15, by the way. I didn't even so, get to see him shirtless. So, I went to bed, um, yeah, right after the uh, Orton-Kevin Owens match. Because everything I had wanted to see on Raw had already happened. But you didn't know you wanted to see uh, somebody's face explode at about the 11.02 time. Uh, I I did not know that I wanted to see that. And I'm sad that I went to bed because that is something I would have been interested in seeing. Yes, yes. (laughs) Yes. Uh, definitely bleeding a good bit. Uh, they finished the match and it's kind of like the Sami Zayn thing. It kind of made the match a bit better, right? Uh, so what do you think? Is he going to be off the shelf? I don't know. What happens with a broken nose, especially that freaking <clears throat> severe? Can he wrestle the next couple of weeks? Honey. It'll be difficult. It'll be difficult. Can he even do promos? 
He can do promos. Okay. He, promos. He'll, he'll sound funny. <laughs> like he sound he'll sound like Virgil for a couple of days. Because <laughs> his nose come back with is the, like crunched in. I think we can get him to come back with the Undertaker mask sword. <clears throat> he could wear the cane mask. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really it's in a, it's, enthusiastic in about the uh, Cody Rhodes mask coming back. I think that'd be a good thing. What was that? Uh, but yeah, he can still wrestle. He, he, but, but like you said, they have to put something over top of it. Uh, <clears throat> and I think they're trying to keep him away from activity now for the next few month, few weeks until mm-hmm. SummerSlam. Cool. Hope you guys are ready Seth for Rollins. a month of John Cena promos. Mm-hmm. I sounded cool. unhappy when I said that. But as it, long as he stops tapping out my favorite guys, that'd be fine. <laughs> I'm so. real excited. You fucking deal uh, with it. Not, uh, That's what happens when you come up against the best. Oh, hey, all right. Oh, God, <laughs> stop all right. it. Yeah, lost in the shuffle. <laughs> lost in the shuffle of Cena getting his face exploded is the fact that the United States champion cleanly tapped <clears throat> out the world champion on Monday Night Raw. Not even on pay-per-view, Sorg. Just give that shit away for free, right? Right, LB? You know, right, here's, super fan? I, I wanted to talk to you about this, actually, because you've been riding no. Cena's dick real hard lately. A, yeah. The whole mayhem yeah, show. Yeah, I know. He's wow. pissing me off. And He's here's the problem. Here and your, these two your anger is directed in the wrong place. It's not John Cena's fault that these people oh. are losing in this fashion. You need to be pissed off at the writers and the management, my friend. Oh. Jen, you, you need to, you need to get Because Cena the wields no power. Cena, we- Sork, Cena wields no real power. You just want a figurehead. You just want a figurehead to be they angry possibly about. Why listen to him? He knows only be the. Why would they possibly listen to John Cena? He's only been the top guy in the company for a damn decade, Sorg. What, because what they don't give creative control. Because why they don't you, give creative control in their me? contracts why anymore. Talk to the man. Talk to the man over I there. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. He feels Sork. he can't reason with. You. They don't give creative control in their contracts anymore. Not since. Uh, racist Hulk Hogan <laughs> <laughs> in WCW <laughs> yeah. ran that to the ground. All the way back around. Um, Not yeah, since creative Swisher. control is a bad idea, but yes. it doesn't mean that. Hey, you know what? But you know what? How many times has Cena been like, oh, "I want to have a match, a balls out match with Cesaro," and they're like, "Oh, sure, go ahead." You know, it's, don't don't be like this. Where, where don't are you, be where like are you this getting this information? Cena is some victim. I'm you not. Know, I'm not saying that Cena is the victim. He's I'm some, just he's saying an unwinning player in this whole. In I'm the just whole saying charade. that it's becoming shtick at hey, this point. Hating John Cena is becoming yeah, shtick, not, hey, and you can't put the all reasons. the blame on him you for know, the decisions made like by an question. entire company. It's like that question on the mm. Facebook group that we got. Who, who put this question on the Facebook group where one of our uh, great mayhemers was went, wanted to ask everybody, "Oh, how many five star matches does Cena have to have before you guys stop hating him?" Look. The quality of the matches is never the issue. Well, okay, it was the issue, but that was like ten years ago. It's not the issue anymore. Oh, well, no one's that? gonna it sit here. No, but, if he listen, if he starts fighting Orton again, it will become an issue. <laughs> yeah. I I I will freely admit that he can't have good matches with people who can't have good matches. Well, yeah, but if he's the United States champion and he, he's he gets not, to have a a match with you know some young spry guys every night at nine o'clock when the crowd is still fresh, come on, sorry. You with me on this? Wait, what, yes, what, the, you're playing right yes, into his hands. I don't want any <laughs> part of this. I don't right want any part hands. of this. <laughs> I'll go out there at 9 o'clock and have a match with Dean Ambrose. Let Roman Reigns stoke in the booze at 11.15. Yeah, and he tears I, the house down every man. single time. Yeah, you exactly. shut your mouth. He does. Oh, you he does. <laughs> don't Sorry. get mad at me because he used Dean it's Ambrose. It's not going to be. It's not going to be. I just want to see more Dean. <laughs> if you're not on the <laughs> video <laughs> version... <laughs> I, I'm fairly, he went the over the Terminator. Here. What more do you is your problem that he beat Seth Rollins, or is your problem that he made Seth Rollins tap out? It's definitely they made him tap out. He does need to get rid well, of that move. Answer, that move, answer, that answer, move, that move sucks. If I were the person in charge of WWE, Seth Rollins wouldn't have a clean loss since WrestleMania. So this is less to do with John Cena and... Even more to do with the way they're handling Seth Rollins. Thank you very, very much. This, Your misplaced anger but wasn't it just has like been identified. A week ago, whenever he was tapping out Kevin Owens, another bad decision. That ending okay, was bullshit, wait, and on. I agree. Besides, whenever oh, they oh, 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 like, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Chach. All right. So here's my thing. <laughs> what the hell does it matter how he beats the guy? 
He beat the guy. Seth Rollins is a heel. He can't win clean. It's against the rules. And now I'm turning into Eamon. And I'm fucking <laughs> Look, I, I don't know. It's, it's sad. It, it's sad because he, while you were talking, that was the first thing I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> Just forget I'm here. <laughs> Move on. Chargingplays.com. Chargingplays.com. I'm going to feel a bit better about himself. <laughs> it, it's, it's difficult for me. I, and I'm in this, I, and, and my wife knows, knows, my this, wife. My, my, knows this better than anybody else. I'm in an endless cycle with Cena. And it's been going on for years where I'm like, all right, I'll put up with it. I'll put up with it. And then like a couple month or so will go by, a month and a half, two months. And I'm like, Fuck this guy. <laughs> Enough. No Matt, more. Matt, I am going to give you a word of advice that I believe came from Maya Angelou. <laughs> <laughs> God, I can't wait for this. <laughs> I'm ready. If you can't change your situation, you have to change your opinion on it. My Angela said that? I don't know. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking. Whoever said it. It's you said it's it. It's true. It's you. I said it just now. The great philosopher LB once said, <laughs> "And let me tell you, just cheer for John Cena, damn it, and everything it will be fine." <laughs> <laughs> it really works. No, I'm not shitting you. No. My favorite wrestler wins consistently now. <laughs> Mine's never on anymore. You know, my, my old favorite wrestler. <laughs> Mine is in an endless feud with our truth. By the way, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what my old favorite wrestler's doing? I don't know. He's not wrestling anymore because he has a fucking neck injury. Oh. Daniel Bryan. Hey, you know what? You know what? Concussion. Concussion. Yeah, we don't even know. He's releasing books and appearing on Tough Enough. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's a shot in the arm for your career. My new favorite wrestler. Oh, he's the U.S. champ, and he defends it every fucking night. Only because they tell him to he, do it. He's the, uh, yeah. he holds it's the, great. He's holding the top title in the company now. Essentially. Chachi, yeah. Chachi, you got something? Yeah, you know who my favorite wrestler is? Kevin uh, Owens. The young folks on don't, NXT don't every Wednesday that only get an hour compared to the three hours of bullshit I had to sit through to watch two NXT Divas match and a Kevin Owens. I got to <laughs> tell you, man, I, this is my prescription. If you're really, 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 really tired of Raw, uh, wait till you hear something good happen like, uh, like, like here or uh, just watch SmackDown, dude. You'll be much happier for it. There's good stuff happening on SmackDown. There's more wrestling and... Uh, no Cena. And no Cena. Or, or you can just watch TNA. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right. Cut his okay. mic. Cut his mic. Shut up, Rick. Cut his mic. You're not my hero anymore. <laughs> All right, on that like note. Hey, you know, you know who my hero is? Who's your hero, Sorg? You know what? Fuck Hulkamania. Yeah. I'm all about pizza mania, baby. Woo! Woo! Yeah. And who's got the best pizza mania Slice in the... Slice on Broadway. That's Slice on Broadway. That's right. These people are here. They're having it. It's in my belly now. <laughs> it's now. true. I ate a They're bunch of it. They're now. LB's all about that mouth texture. Oh, don't... Oh, mouth feel, sir. Mouth feel. Sorry. He's, he's, he's bringing it in. He's bringing it into yeah, the shop for you guys now. for the visual. There it is. Oh, there it is. Pieces the pizza. Left. Is there anything oh, left look, in there? Look, one look, slice. Look, There's one so slice delicious. left. Oh, oh there it is. Everybody slice on Broadway Blank. brings the people into the couch so they can have very awkward conversations with a monk. With a <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. What's Lady happening? Come right on. Now. Yeah, Lady and Trampet. Lady and Trampet. Come on, Matt. Get in on that. Get in on that. There he goes. Yeah. Middle. Slice on Broadway is so delicious. It makes people do weird things over one person's wife. There it is. Check it out yourself. SliceOnBroadway.com here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Main Street by Carnegie, PA. SliceOnBroadway.com. It'll make you do weird things. I feel dirty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Check me out on Facebook, on Slice on, on, on uh, Instagram, and get dirty too. We'll be right back. Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24 hour game thon for youth arts programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium, or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, start. Yeah. 
It is time. He's got a curfew tonight. He's turned into a pumpkin. Actually, he's got a bit of a drive in front of him, so we want to get him out of the studio, and we want to make sure Matt doesn't bitch slap him if things get too rough. <laughs> or, uh, or, or, or Will turns back around and, 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 and pistol whips him. I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. Uh, I've heard that happen go. to the last guy. Listen, yeah. if this argument goes a half hour more, we're just going to end up fucking... <laughs> There's only one solution is to make up. That's how exactly. Every exactly right. that's how every ho- holiday episode ends. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I get drunk. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> that explains so much. Sorg, it's time for the big question. Will yes, yes it is. <laughs> so uh, this whole Hulk Hogan thing is terrible, right? Right. Um, and it, we've it, illustrated that point it very got, well. It got me thinking about how like a lot of wrestling fans don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got the people who are on his side and the people who are not on his side. But a lot of wrestling fans don't give a shit. They don't know who he is. And it got me thinking about the reason we care is because we grew up with Hulk Hogan. He's been an mm-hmm. icon the entire time we've been wrestling fans. So, right. the big question is, what is something from your formative wrestling years that you miss? Something that is lacking from wrestling now? Ooh. I'll start. I know it's awful for the wrestlers, and I totally respect that this is not a thing anymore, but I love a good hardcore match. I always have, mm-hmm. and I haven't seen one in a while, and they always make me have... No, I saw one at RWA. Uh, which what match? What show was that? <laughs> that was the Unleashed match, available on PittsburghWrestling.com. Uh, Incredible G-Raver, hardcore G-Raver, match. G-Raver, Akuma, fans bring the weapons match, falls count anywhere. Great stuff. Great stuff. They don't do that in mainstream wrestling anymore. Have you tried TNA lately? Have you tried no. Bloody Mania at the Gathering of the Juggalos? Sort of. We're just going to have a whole year of you trying to get me to go. Yes, we are. <laughs> it might work. Well, it'll be you and me, LB. Hey. It's a whole other conversation for the Indie Mayhem. Sure. Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, my choice is uh, I, I really miss hardcore wrestling. Done well. Now, are we talking like um, garbage cans and pallets and, you know, stacks of pipes in the backstage? Are we talking like. Light bulbs. Uh, glass light bulbs. Wire. No, there's there's a line that only I mean you can only cross it every now and then. Like the like a barbed wire match, that's great, that's fine. If you do one of more than one of those a year, you've lost my interest. You know yeah, what I mean? The barbed wire match is like good for like once a decade. Yeah. You're like, oh a barbed wire match? Oh, I have to see that. And then you see it and goes, Okay, I'm good. Yeah. That Sabu Terry Funk thing, yeah. that's that's fine. That's pretty much everyone's yeah. one barbed wire <laughs> match. Yeah. Yeah. Sabu and Terry Funk, mm. I'm good. Use it sparingly. I, I got I gotta say my uh, my my Friday night involved uh, glass for that ass match, uh, <laughs> a, 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 a barbed wire match, and a uh, a bloody rumble where you have to be bleeding before you can be thrown out of it. That's amazing. Good. Wow. Yes. Different. Okay, that might have sold me on God last year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you guys. Yeah. I'm telling you guys. Like the three nights of wrestling were freaking amazing, mm-hmm. and that may be enough for you guys to go. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And I think really you guys would kind of dig the culture there. But other than that, so that's me. So we're... me, um, theatrics. Theatrics. Uh, now I wasn't around in the era where uh, Undertaker and Kane were throwing lightning at each other. But I was, uh, I had an interesting uh, interaction where I'm wearing my Ultimate Warrior shirt on Saturday night and I'm walking out to the parking lot. Uh, and, and I ran into someone who was like, he just like, he just launched into conversation with me about Papa Shango and Ultimate Warrior. And that <laughs> weird stuff. And like, we look back at it and it's so, it's so odd now. And they make fun of it on like Countdown or something, right? But still, like that whole weird theatrical, what is happening here kind of thing, or, or uh, Jake Snake Roberts throwing Undertaker in the snake pit, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, that kind of weird, crazy stuff that used to happen back in the day. Or Undertaker in general in the early 90s, right? I, I miss that level of theatrics. And, uh, we definitely don't get that today. And I really hope when Kane comes back, they pull out all the stops and just Kane is just ridiculous, crazy, spiritual monster Kane. Because I think that is missing. Um, but yeah. Uh, weird weird little anecdote uh, uh, on top of that. The guy that stopped me to talk about Papa Shango, turns out he was in the Backyard Wrestling 2 video game. <laughs> oh, wow. So, there you go. Um, nice. Nice. Man, I remember that game. I love that game. Yeah, I remember it. Those games were amazing. I love them. 
Uh, Matt Carlin's? Um, well, there's a lot of things I miss, but uh, you know one thing I, I, I really do miss? Um, and I think it would come in handy these days. I miss the brawl to the back, Sorg. Yes! I miss the non-finish where two guys are just so hell-bent on clubbering each other that they just disappear up the ramp and behind the curtain and are never seen again. And you and don't have it. any... We have no cameras to follow them. <laughs> they, they, they're just gone. We'll see you next week. I love it. What, the, it and it's such a perfect out for a match where you don't want to do a finish, the brawl to the back. I need that, like, once every couple months. I like that. I like that. Jim Carlins? What? 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 what your question? <laughs> the big question. Oh, the question. Oh, I don't know. You want to think about it for a little bit? I t- Wheels, how about you? Yeah, thanks. All right. Uh, this brings me to this past weekend's show, the main event with the cage, a.k.a. like the Renegade Games was inspired by War Games, which made me think of I, LB, this was a great question because it makes me miss the two K, the two ring cage monstrosity that was the real war games, mm-hmm. and it, it was back then watching that kind of thing, and it was also brings to the other match of the two rings where they had the battle royal in two rings until it came down to. One like small group of guys had to go into one ring, and I miss those days where it was just that crazy of wrestling that you had to have two rings. Awesome! Yeah, the, the WCW was big about that, weren't they? So, yes, they were. Yeah, very theatrical. What about you, Chach? Uh, three things. One, I, I kind of agree with both uh, you and LB in uh, hardcore matches and theatrics, only in the form of a 24-7 title defense. Mm. I, I miss the hardcore title during its uh, any time, any place. Uh, two, uh, actual good wrestling, but that's been cured with NXT. Three, David Arquette. Yes. Wait, you want him to come back? Why not? I, I want to know when it... First off, I, I said yesterday that I think you should be DLC for an upcoming WWE game. Okay, that could be fun. They have uh, a lot of space and, left. Right. And secondly, I think he should be inducted into the Hall of Fame if he oh, isn't already. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, you guys right. want, oh, right. you guys want freaking Arrow to have a SummerSlam match, but you want to besmirch David Arquette. Uh, he's right. He... He had a more memorable wrestling career than... And a lot of WCW. David Arquette accomplished more in wrestling than Virgil did. Yes. Boom. I said it. Whoa! 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 Have to check that. Whoa! But you can find out about the rest of Virgil's wrestling career at <laughs> PittsburghWrestling.com and Joe-Dabrowski.com tomorrow on DVD and digital download. <laughs> wow. Riz is on that shit, yo. Yes. Um, uh, Fine, Riz. Jen. Uh, yes. Riz. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm glad nobody took mine because one. one thing, one of the arts that hasn't been a thing in a long time were vignettes. Like the the the, the reason they they told a story. They they made they had the background for. The wrestler coming in. Why is Razor Ramon talking like this? Why is Mr. Perfect so perfect? And those vignettes showed you those backgrounds of those characters. And now you just get Michael Cole and JBL try to discuss something. Yeah. And it falls flat on their face. Yeah. Yeah. You can't funnel through them all the time. <laughs> That's a budget thing. You know what? Just go shoot them on iPhones like they do everything yeah. else. Like, like I, I can't wait until uh, Cass and uh, Enzo come up. Oh, yes. They're going to use their iPhone for their vignettes if they have some. Do you think they'll let them at that level? Yes. Yes. Yes? That, no? It fits no, their gimmick. no? Okay. No. All right. 
it fits their gimmick. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> I, I hope that's the first step of that. I'm afraid, I, like, Matt's shaking his head ferociously over there. Uh, but uh, either, either them or Tyler Breeze. Or or I'm thinking it gets to that point. Uh, it's a different production company. It's a different production team. And they're going to say, no, we don't, we're not going to do that iPhone shit, you know. Um, versus NXT is a little more, has the younger people involved. And, and and that will find that acceptable. So what is happening? What? Oh, oh, well, you're not, whoa, uh, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! Will Crotch, uh, are you out of here, good sir? I'm leaving. Bye. Okay. Sorry, I got. I gotta uh, drive a bunch tonight. Obvious. I don't want to fall asleep. Not a me. problem. Not a problem. Um, Jen, do you have Tyler anything? Crotch. Jen, do you have anything while we're doing a transition here? Give her a mic. She's got talking talking to the mic before we we move you here. But we got LB Crotch in the way in the in the meantime, of course. Jen was just telling me like three or four things, and I don't know why she's getting all shy all of a sudden. Yeah. I miss the groups. I miss like the shield. The factions. Like the factions. The okay. factions. I dig it. DX. DX. There's Los not Burry enough of that. Was... That's what actually. That's what got me back into it. The shield. The shield. Yeah. And then they just break them up and. Yeah. And why I are you? That. And why are you still watching? For Dean Ambrose. Because you hope they get back together. <laughs> there you go. And the mic's in Amber versus the Marty Janae. You shut your mouth, Riz. Oh. He, Same. He's a, he's a cockroach that you can't kill, according to his uh, backstage interview. Which oh, was man, actually, how awesome that was, was that? A, that was a good interview, that by the way. That was a great interview. He is a, a Terminator interview. cockroach. <laughs> Me ran into Mr. McMahon and was called a cockroach, and he made a whole promo out of it. <laughs> That's great. He's a T-1000 cockroach. I love that match, too. I, I love that. Like, just like the, the key, the key, it was, a, it was something different, Right. That he was uh, keeping him out of the ring, and it was just him fighting back, fighting back, fighting back, you know. Um, and but, he was shirtless. <laughs> and I missed it. I don't know. I keep missing what the most important part of this is supposed to be. But anyways. Um, <laughs> Did everybody go? Everybody here went. Let me let me see. I know our chat's a little weird tonight. I apologize. We're, we're stuck on Ustream. Uh, YouTube was crashing our system. Uh, so we're going to try to figure that out by the next time we do another stream. I, I, I just don't even know. And, uh, okay. <laughs> what, is what were you looking at me? No, there's a chat. There's a chat over in your general direction. Uh, but anyways, the, uh, I didn't really set a, a, a prize for this one, but you know, let us know on the, uh, Twitters. Uh, what do you miss from your childhood in pro wrestling? And I think uh, we'll uh, tell you what we will do. I don't know. I, I, got, I, got, I got an idea, Sword. What? 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 In in honor of the uh, Virgil DVD. Mm-hmm. How about we give uh, uh, what was that? The IWC show with Virgil in it. The reboot. Uh, oh, reboot. reloaded. Yeah. Reloaded. How about you get yeah. IWC's Reloaded with Virgil as a surprise entrance in there? Also includes Tommy Dreamer becoming the IWC champion. Also a surprise. A very Spoiler fun show. Alert. It's on the cover. <laughs> Dude, he's on the cover were, with the belt. You were there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were you there on that one? Anyways, that was the whole yeah. marketing campaign behind the DB. Like, watch Tommy Dreamer win a championship. It was, uh, it was kind of the point. Uh, but anyways, that will be your freebie <laughs> this week if you participate. Hashtag WMS Big Question on Twitter. Please follow us as well so we can DM you your prize and uh, <laughs> let us know uh, what 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 do you miss from your childhood? We had some answers from last week. Some people like to email us. We'd rather you do it on Twitter. But some people have a lot more than 140 characters. The question of last week was, "What makes a good feud?" And well, uh, that's the point, sort. And the win, the the, the 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 we're passing out VOW's Rumble Party uh, from Jam January with guys like Sabu on it, it's Rhino, crazy stuff, uh, hardcore match, barbed wire. Speaking of which, LB he left. Uh, but uh, no, we had Lanford Paul on the Twitters hitting us up. Uh, he's been uh, participating in this uh, a good bit. Uh, Jimmy Valen had some great feuds with uh, Paul Jones' army. I'm not familiar with those. I'll have to check those out on the network, I guess. Uh, Dusty Rose feud with the ho Four Horsemen is a perfect example. And also said whatever Eamon said last night or last week uh, was 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 said perfectly about what makes a feud. So uh, go back to last week's episode and figure out what that was. Uh, from Antonio Garza, WrestlingRevolution.com. Zero 2K. WMS, here's my answer for what makes a good feud. Much of that, uh, much that I would think 
were already mentioned, so I'll just add a bit to what Eamon mentioned. I really liked what Eamon said last week. Holy crap. <laughs> and uh, take it up a notch. It's nice when you see the type of feud work into a match, uh, but I'll say that the best is when the feud plays into the show itself. Examples. One, from last Monday, Brock didn't wait until his segment to come out and fight Taker. As soon as he got to the arena, he ran to the ring and got in a fight. Two, at ROH's death before, before dishonor, five, six, seven, eight, uh, Generico interrupted the first match in the first minutes. I, it, the, the text is weird. It's crunched together. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, the first match in the first minutes and called out Kevin Steen. Steen, now! And what did Steen do? He went there and started the show with the biggest feud of the year. Uh, fuck following a program. These two hate each other, and they're not going to wait for the program to kick each other's ass. Mm. I, I like that. I, when it feels real, right? Like that. Where it's like, no, I'm going to kick this guy's ass. It's not a segment. It's not waiting for this. I'm going to find him in the back. I'm going to make this happen. We're, we're doing this. Um, you go back to the email. I just uh, feel it adds so much more to the wrestlers. Uh, when the wrestlers do more than just have a match, calling people out, looking for someone backstage, all those things, when well executed, add so much to a feud. Then simply, I hate you. Uh, but I'll wait for Garcia to introduce you and lock you in a, he- in a headlock. Uh, off topic, as a side note, the uh, WWE cock blocking ROH ever going to be talked about on the show? I think at some point uh, this will need to be addressed. Things are happening, and eventually that pot will boil. Later's zero out. P.S. Plus the existence of Stephanie McMahon. What would what would wrestling be without her? <laughs> Hashtag Divas Revolution. Um, and there's a following email about how much uh, 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 Stephanie McMahon is a terrible person. We'll get to in a moment. Uh, but there you go. Thank you for that. Uh, you guys are going to get some BOW Rumble Party, and I'll try not to. I don't have a vacation to get in the way of that this week, so I'm sorry for the delays and a lot of things last week. Uh, one little response to Garza mm-hmm. on the ROH thing. I, I, I would love to feel bad for ROH, but when they're like scheduling shows for the Dallas-Fort Worth area on WrestleMania weekend, I'm mm-hmm. like, it's not like you're running away. Um, oh, if that's how ROH wants to play it, then that's how you play it. Yeah, yeah. And you know and, what? And they're good enough to go. They're good enough when they're at their best. They're good enough to go toe to toe, and they're definitely good enough to draw against NXT, even though they don't have the big marketing the machine. I think as far as in ring quality goes, ROH might be just a step ahead right now because of the talent purge that's gone on, especially since the three divas left um, NXT. Why? Why everyone scared? You know, I I don't look at it as uh, ROH getting blocked. I look at it as ROH. Kind of, uh, I don't know if they're embracing it, but they're kind they're of, competing. they're not running from it. No, no, in my they eyes, shouldn't. they're not running from and it. And they shouldn't, and they no. shouldn't. There's nothing to keep them from that. Why not uh, latch onto that a little bit, get some, get a little bit of shine from it? I mean, I love the idea of being able to go to a WrestleMania to a SummerSlam and catch it in an ROH show. And yeah, when an NXT thing like, like came up, this I would make a decision between that, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and and uh, I think I would be happy with either decision. So. Now the, the the big problem right now is that like what the hell is Jushin Thunder Liger doing on an NXT show in Brooklyn on the same night that the biggest stars of New Japan are doing a show with ROH in a ballpark on the other side of Brooklyn? Now that's when you start to get a little weirded out. And you're like, okay, mm-hmm. is there something else going on here? Because New Japan, that talent exchange with New Japan and ROH has been huge for both sides. Right. But if Don't... New Japan is going to get in bed with WWE, that's a problem. For, wow! For, for well, ROH. they already are a little bit, aren't they? With the talent exchanges and the people trying no. out from over there. Well, I mean, are, are we talking about Ring of Honor? And I'm talking Japan? about WWE. They're already involved, mm-hmm. and they're very name dropping. And I think they who did they they, they name drop them? But there hasn't been a New Japan talent in WWE. Uh, not not I don't not know, a, not, not a signed a talent. You're saying right? Yeah. But, but if, uh, I, I think there's definitely a working relationship with these guys coming over. There was the tryouts of a lot of those guys when they were over there with New Japan. Um, who helped them? Didn't they get a co-promoter or something to do that Beast the Beast show? Beast in the East show? Like I, I thought they name dropped somebody that helped co-promote. I don't or, know, but I don't maybe think... I'm confusing with like uh, the TNA show, perhaps. There was definitely um, they definitely got some assistance. WWE yeah. definitely got some assistance as far as the production side go. When, right. Whenever they went over right, there, right, I don't right, know right. if that anything. I, 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 you're, you're, I'm often an area where I'm not 
technical expertise is That's waning a, yeah, yeah, no. as we speak. But yeah, I'll be interested in that. Okay, anyways, if you want to support indie wrestling, Japanese wrestlers sometimes, uh, etc., so go start over at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Some great shirts, some great designs by the great uh, Alex Cars. And you can check out uh, shirts by other uh, great wrestlers. Uh, I just saw, uh, oh, who was the wrestler? Uh, uh, suit. Uh, where's Eamon when I need, need it? Uh, but there's a lot of people coming up. DJ Z actually has Shinsuke a new shirt. Nakamura. There, there's Nakamura. He's in there. Um, uh, DJ Z, Zima Ion, friend of the show. Saw him earlier uh, uh, this year on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, he, I know, saw him announce on Twitter he's going to have a new T-shirt coming on ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's not just ProWrestlingTees.com that we have stuff going on. If you go over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, you can go over to the side. There's all kinds of ways and subscription buttons, and uh, there's a Pro Wrestling Tees button. But right below that, this awesome uh, Mayhem Club, uh, and there's our new Spreadshirt Shop, uh, the Great Mayhem Club shirt that i know uh uh you're sporting uh, uh from time to time matt it's true uh, you could be yes. riz you can uh pick up a chachi play shirt which uh proceeds do go to the cause if you do pick up a shirt or sweater through here uh, does, that, does that say i'm a chachi says guy that says it sure I'm a, does yeah it does there's and one there's next the, to it with a cross there's one cross out too. Through it. those are still yeah. up there okay uh, but uh, you also don't be a smart ass from a few weeks ago. So if you want to dig those, you want to wear them to wrestling shows, we're going to try to come up with a few new designs like this from time to time uh, as we get some good stuff. I might clean out some of this. There's some there's weird stuff. Like, I don't know who this guy is. There's like a giant face. I don't know. What are we, where were I've we seen doing? That guy like, I don't know. Who is that guy? Uh, but anyways, we're the old uh, uh, Mayhem World Order that we got. Yeah, I was wearing that around a little bit. Just, just a don't comments. take down the, uh, whatever you do, don't take down the should I wrestle that. With no, the man the you don't like you, you, really. Big fan, love that one. Big fan of that one. I wear we, that from time to time. You know, we need a wheel shirt there somewhere. <laughs> a wheel shirt. Just the wheel shirt. One tire wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Go check out. Support the show. Put some clothes on your back uh, if if you would like to. If you're digging some of the designs. All right, let's get into. We got another email, um, but. F- First of all, okay, so you got something you want to say too, right? Uh, we'll, we'll touch on what that. What would I like to there. talk about? You first. said you wanted sixty seconds to talk about something. Uh, Should we start the clock? ROH thing, or what? What was the thing you wanted to talk about? Uh, there, there are two things I, I wanted to get mentioned here on the back end. Okay. Um, and I'll just do them right now. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, just because it's been a hot topic on the Facebook group. Uh, Ring of Honor has apparently lost its 8 o'clock time slot on Destination America. Holy crap. And it's been taken over by a barbecue show because Destination America. Destination America, yeah. <laughs> and anyway, uh, I guess they'll still be on at 11 o'clock. But they, that's not a good they, sign. They were still, uh, I saw the numbers a couple of weeks ago, and they were getting about half of what TNA was getting. Yeah. But also, keep in mind, there are how many times through how many other networks, too. Yeah, and you're airing a show that's already aired on the Sinclair Broadcast. Club. Right, right. It's not a um, premiere episode, so... It's not an original programming. And as Mad Mike and I so eloquently discussed for <laughs> about 20 minutes on the Midweek War this past week, uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be frank with you guys. The Ring of Honor weekly television show since it got on Destination America has not been very good. Mediocre at best. It's been really uneven. The in-ring has been great, but it's really tough to hang with because it just doesn't drag you through from one episode to another. Anyway, they lost their 8 o'clock time slot on Destination America to a barbecue show. Life goes on. Mm-hmm. Uh, the hey, other thing, of- Barbecue Pitmasters is a good show. It's a great show, Riz. It's a great show. I just want to eat my television every time I'm watching it. Mm. Um, Iron Mixon can get it. <laughs> of course. I don't. What happened? Um, well, sort of trying. At our at your our, our friend Buddy implored me that this year I need to watch the G1 climax. I've been hearing Japan, about this in New Japan World. I heard somebody saying like I watched GM, GM, I watched the first night of climax and now I need a nap. And I didn't understand they were talking about wrestling at first. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's this is insane. Sort no one. No one can keep up with this tournament. They're having shows almost every single night, and they're having yeah, tournament days. matches almost every single night. And I can't watch all these matches, so I'm just <laughs> I'm kind of nitpicking top of the card, just whatever matches I think are good, and I'm I'm keeping up with it. And, and I didn't watch the show that was on this morning. There was another show on this morning because of course there's always another show on the G1 Climax, and you got to watch it like six in the morning. Um, but my kids didn't wake me up early enough to catch it. Anyway, mm-hmm. I'll try to watch it later. Point is, a lot of great matches. 
but an overwhelming amount of content. But if you're going to try to get into the G1 Climax, because it's not too late, just, just go find all the matches featuring Kota Ibushi. Ooh. Golden Star, Kota Ibushi. He does the flippy stuff that the kids love. This dude is awesome. He's had an amazing match with Tanahashi. He's had an amazing match with AJ Styles already. This dude is money. He had, like, perhaps had the match of the year back at the start of the year against Nakamura at Wrestle Kingdom. Kota Ibushi is kicking all types of ass right now, Storm. So if you're going to get on the G1 train, go find that guy right now. I'm He's looking at so far. I'm looking at the history of this thing, and 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 uh, uh, past winners include two times Andre the Giant and one time Hulk Hogan. Well, that's interesting. That's crazy. That's interesting. Very that's interesting. really interesting. Um, but uh, wow. Uh, so so this is like, I can't believe something like this exists. Of course, only in Japan, mm-hmm. right? It's crazy, and it's all like round robin. So they, they apparently used to be even crazier. Uh, like I said, this is the first year I've really tried to keep up with it. Uh, but from what I heard in years past, where they, they split the wrestlers, they have like two groups of ten, and they all have like round robin matches to amass points. You get points for wins, etc. Um, but apparently, like in years past, they would just have like ten matches on one card on a single night, and they have like ten singles matches, and just night after night after night until all these wrestlers were just dead, just all like busted up, <laughs> broken down. This year, they're kind of like laying off like five matches a night, and then the next night. The other group has their singles matches and everyone else gets to do like six man tags and kind of like lay low and a little bit and rest up and then they maybe get one day off here or there. So they've kind of eased up on the schedule and I heard that like in the past the tournament matches would be a lot shorter. This time the tournament matches are a little bit longer, which obviously means better matches. So you're getting like good like 15, 20 minute matches featuring these guys. Good stuff. It, it's kind of like what Bound for Glory wanted to be, mm-hmm. but it failed to be. Because there, you can't really, you can't really duplicate what they they did over the, in, in, for the G one classic. It, it 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 is the best. It is it is it tops King of the Ring. I think. I feel like there's for, like a, a Karate Kid best of the best type movie that should come out of this. Like as more <laughs> I'm reading about this, and I love WrestleZone. It says WrestleZone will attempt to provide coverage and results for as many of this year's G one as possible. I appreciate that honesty because <laughs> I am attempting to watch it, and I'm only getting like. Two or three matches. Basically, mm-hmm. I've been lucky to get like the top two or three matches on each card, and like I haven't seen these tag matches. Mm-hmm. Like every once in a while, I see them. Like, oh, here's the guy who misses the headbutt every time. I'm gonna watch this <laughs> tag match because Hanuma's hilarious. And, um, and like, yeah, and here's this goofy, weird Toro Yano, just this weird blonde-haired, chubby guy wow. who does weird stuff. And then I'll, I'll kind of watch that. But it, it is tough to keep up with. But um, like I said, if you're gonna seek it out. Um, all go right. find Ibushi and uh, go find Styles and Tanahashi. That was longer than 60 seconds. I didn't sure mean to. I, I, but you know right. what? Here on the Mayhem Show, 60 seconds, Eamon taught us a long time ago. I 60 mean, seconds I mean, actually means like five Chachi, or ten minutes. Chachi was here when we actually timed Eamon. Yeah. And you went past what Eamon stopped at. I, I did my spiel, and you guys engaged me in the conversation, so we're just we're talking now. We're just doing this is not my time. Doing have, thing, man. The problem I have with watching Japanese wrestling is not being able to understand them. Yeah. Mute. You see, I used to think no, that, that see, would, that's the thing. I can't watch it without the commentary. See, I thought that would be a problem too, but now I don't care. Because I you know what, I actually think I prefer the Japanese commentary to most things I get in English sword. Definitely I don't know what that guy It's more emotion than what they say. It's more emotion than what they say, exactly. And I don't know what that dude in New Japan saying, but I'm pretty sure he's better than Michael Cole. And <laughs> and, and I just you know, and, and general chuckle at me because I'll laugh every time he calls like I'm not gonna should I try to do like one of his calls and he's like, you know, Larry Alto, or he's like, high fly flow, or something like that. And it's just like, <laughs> Rainmaker! Rainmaker! Yeah. Just awesome. You thought she would be the only one to chuckle. <laughs> wow. All right, we're ready. Running... Oh, another yeah. funny thing about the, another ahead. funny thing, not since we're talking about the commentary, and since we already brought up Jushin Thunder Liger, Jushin Thunder Liger was a guest commentator. On, and the image of Jushin Thunder Liger with his headset on, this giant mask <laughs> sitting at the table. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Awesome. Well, hey, you know, we're running kind of late here, so I don't want to get... Uh, sorry, Ciro. We're going to... Uh, basically, he's, he's uh, got a question 
uh, Stephanie McMahon is a terrible person and, and some more stuff about Cena and Rollins, uh, which I think we definitely did that to death a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, but he's got some stuff about PWG we'll talk about on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to know, what did you guys learn from wrestling this week? Wheels? Wheels? Let's see. What did I learn? I have learned that when watching a steel cage match and you hear certain music, you see babies fly. What? 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 And if you want to know more about that story, if you're lucky, I might mention it on the Indie Mayhem show, Sorg Let's Me. Oh, my. Oh, my. I can't wait to edit this one. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, Riz, what did you learn from wrestling this week? What? What did you learn from wrestling this wow. week? Um, uh, no, I was still wedding about that. <laughs> oh. Did I break you, Riz? Uh, uh, I learned that... Um, that no matter what you do, if you do it for a very, very long time, you're going to get too big even for your own ego. And I think that's what happened with Hulk. He got way too big okay. for his own ego. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. What about you, Chach? I learned that Stephanie McMahon is the savior of wrestling. <laughs> there you go. All and praise. and praise you know what? Man. To a point, they're right. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, she said yes. That's right. There you go. Mm -hmm. Matt Garland. Yeah, that is correct. She I, said I, yes and saved wrestling. That's right. Matt Garland. So I, th I think the best – what I learned from wrestling this week, perhaps the best piece of advice I – I read online um, over the past week when we went through all the drama that we've gone through together. Keep the WWE at arm's length. Just the the more you, if you when you try to embrace it, it turns on you. And I think that's part of what happened with Hogan. I think sometimes it's when I get upset about Cena. Keep the WWE at arm's length. Just watch. Don't get too invested. Don't you think, hon? Because you'll get hurt. Because you'll get hurt. You'll break your heart. <laughs> What about you, Jen Carlins? What I learned. Well, I've learned that SummerSlam will be the last viewing spectacular at the Carlins' house of fun. Oh, no. What? That's right. So I want all you guys to be there. Yeah, I gotta let you know. Due to declining attendance. Riz. Riz. <laughs> <laughs> And the Carlins looking for a new home. Oh. And the general declining quality of the pay-per-views, wouldn't you say? It kind of sucked. I mean, how many temper tantrums <laughs> do you guys really want me to have? There you go. There you go. None, really. None. Exactly. Exactly. But most part, construction to our house, mm -hmm. nobody will make it. Apparently, the city's trying to cut us off from the rest of... Uh, Allegheny County sword. What? They're like trying to take out Route 51. Are you I know serious? no one that, that, listening that's outside that's of Pittsburgh. Like is even understand. on even on a Sunday night, they're ripping like, out the road. Oh yeah. Oh jeez. And it's down to one lane. Yeah. Oh jeez. How and am I going to get to the wrestling shows? I have to work. You're you're screwed. You're screwed. And there ain't no Parkway South. I really like to no. say. <laughs> and there ain't no Parkway South. That's truth. That's oh. fact. Well, thankfully, I only have to go to White Oak this Saturday. Uh, but anyways, I learned, uh, I learned what's more devastating than thumbtacks, barbed wire, and glass for that ass match. Legos. Damn right. Oh, those bastards Legos. Are. Yeah, they do. And we'll talk about that on the Indie Mayhem Show. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, from the, um, Facebook. Sorry, real quick. Matt Taylor. Uh, Hogan has always been used, has always used the hard R, brother. Uh, that you die fighting on the Bellas or live long enough to become one. <laughs> from uh, same, uh, learned that my heroes are falling from grace one by one. At least I still have Shark Boy to look up to from Andrew Cars, or actually <laughs> Alex Cars. Uh, TNA spoilers make me sad from uh, Mad Mike. Uh, uh, Sean learned that uh, even in death, Dusty Rhodes is still part of the TNA booking team. What? Okay. You got me. Uh, Jen, you said be careful what you say; it will affect you in the future. Okay. Uh, my sister is on here. Uh, she joined us recently on, on the on the group. Uh, even your bedroom is not safe or private. I hope she's talking about Paul Hogan. 
Uh, Bob, uh, Bobby F. Town learned that Seth Rollins tried to shatter the glass ceiling, Cena by himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Garza learned that people are way too sensitive to words. Just kidding. Like Al Patron says, uh, I already knew that. Um, and he did learn that, however, uh, uh, ROH signing Roddy to an exclusive contract just made Battle of Los Angeles a must-attend show. That'd be the PWG one, of course. And he's got some other comments, and we'll look to use those later. Uh, sorry, I, I'm seeing things over here, uh, apparently. But uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Everybody, and I'm sorry, again, the stream was a little wonky tonight. Uh, and, and we got Hulk Hogan's in our face and everything. It's been very weird. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us. WrestlingManshow.com, live at WrestlingManshow.com is when it usually works at about 9 p.m. Eastern time. Join us for about three hours of podcasting about wrestling and so much more. Uh, so... <laughs> So with that, creepy Hulk Hogan wrestling buddy and everybody else, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.